If you will, turn with me to John chapter 13. John chapter 13. I'm kind of nervous about my story this morning, okay? So uh, you may have to give me a little grace and mercy here. It's just a joke, okay? This fellow walks into this restaurant, and he sees this very attractive blonde lady sitting at this table. And so he's going to get a little smart with her. So he goes up and he says, hey, lady, have you heard any good blonde jokes lately? And uh, just as he starts to tell her the joke, two of her friends that are blondes come in and sit down with her. And she says, wait, wait just a minute before you tell your joke, sir. Uh, I'm 6'3", and I am the mixed martial arts women's champion of the world. This lady sitting beside me is a graduate of Villanova, and she is the NCAA shot-putting ladies champion in track and field. And the lady sitting beside her is the WWF champion women's champion wrestler. Now, are you sure you want to tell your blonde joke? And he says, well, if I got to explain it three times, I guess not. (laughs) 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 Yeah. Ooh. (laughs) The story that we're going to look at this morning is going to end Follow the Leader series. We've been looking at what following the leader or following Jesus looks like. And today we're going to look at a a lesson that I call Greatest in the Kingdom. And this is an amazing story because it involves three things. (laughs) A towel, a bowl of water, and dirty feet. Those are the three things that it involves. And let me kind of give you a backdrop to what is going on in John chapter 13. Uh, It's Thursday night, the night before Jesus, of course, is going to go to the cross. He's going to go to the cross on Friday, but so this is Thursday night. And they're in the upper room. This is, they're eating the Passover one evening earlier because Jesus is not going to be around for Passover on Friday. And so he had asked his disciples to prepare the dinner for them to go find a hall, to rent the hall, and to get this dinner ready. And I'm sure that tension was so thick you could have cut it with, with a knife. Uh, betrayal is in the air. Uh, you've got Judas sitting there. Jesus knows what Judas has done, what Judas is going to do in just a few hours, what he is going to go through that evening. Later, the next day, he is going to be scourged and then put to death. And so all this is the weight of all this is on Jesus. And uh, it is so important that Jesus is going to do something that no self-respecting Jew would have done, and that is to wash some feet. As a matter of fact, Jesus is going to do something that even it would have been the lowest person on the social wrong ladder uh, for them to do this, and that was to wash their feet. And in verse 7, this is so important that I want you to listen to what Jesus says. He says, what I do you do not realize or you don't understand now, but you will understand hereafter or you're going to understand what's going on later. Right now you don't understand it, but later on you're going to understand it. And the key takeaway that we will have this morning from John chapter 13 is the lower you go, the greater you're going to be is really what it's all about. If if you're going to be like Jesus... If you're going to uh, touch people the way that Jesus touched people, and if you're going to be a follower of Jesus, and if you're going to impact people the way that Jesus impacted people, there are three things that you must do each and every day. And Jesus gives us those three things, those final three things right here in chapter 13. Now, this is kind of the end to the teaching of Jesus. He's been with them for three and a half years. And we come to what I would call his final lesson. This is it. There's not going to be any more lessons taught after this because Jesus in just a few hours is going to be betrayed by Judas. Uh, The Jews are going to lead him away. The next time they see him, he's going to be in court. Then he's going to be scourged. He's going to be crucified and he's going to be placed in the tomb. And so this is the end of the physical teaching of Jesus while he is here upon the earth before his death. 
And so these three things that Jesus tells us that we must do, and, and, and he is giving them what I would call an object lesson. And he says, now, right now you don't get the point. But later on you're going to understand what happened right here. The first thing, he said, if you want to impact people the way that I impact people, that you've got to surrender your power. Now let's read the first couple of verses together. Now before the feast of the Passover, Jesus, knowing that his hour had come, that he would depart out of the world. In other words, he knew that the cross was close. He said that he would depart from the world to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, the devil, having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come forth from God and was going back to God, got up from the supper and laid aside his garments, and taking a towel, he girded it around his waist." Now, the first thing that I want you to notice is that what Jesus says, what John says about Jesus. Now, we all understand the story that in this text, Jesus is eating with his disciples, and his time has come. He's going to go to the cross, and very quietly he gets up, and he goes, and he takes the towel, and he goes over, and he begins washing their feet. Now, there's something that I want you to notice that if you read this very quickly over this, you don't ever see it. But if you go back up in these verses, I want you to notice what happened. He says that knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands. In other words, all power had been given to him. Jesus is going to lay aside that power. Now, when he says that God had given him all things or all power, what does that mean? Jesus could have stopped his death at any point. Jesus, having the power of all things, did he have power over Pontius Pilate? Could he have stopped the trial? Right then and there. Those men that scourged, could he have stopped the scourging? Right there. If those men that came to Jesus in the garden, those temple guards, and were going to arrest him, could he have stopped it right then? Right then and there, he could have stopped. Why? Because all power had been given to him. But Jesus levied that power to someone else. And that's a very key thing that I must understand. That if I'm going to be like Jesus, I'm going to have to realize that I cannot have the power. I've got to give the power. Knowing he had uh, control over all things. He had all of the power. And what does he do? Does he give orders? Does he throw his weight around? Does he make demands? Does he set up judgment and start judging people about, well, before you crucify me this, think about you did this and you did that and what you don't deserve. No, he didn't do any of those things. In the next verse, notice with me that in the next verse, there's this very simple statement. He got up from the supper and laid aside his garments. In the original language, the, the NIV verse uses this word. He says, all power had been given to him, so he got up from the supper. So he got up. Now notice, he is going to do something that only a slave did. And that was wash people's feet. No one else did that. All the disciples could see that the feet were dirty. Now, they had been traveling. They wore sandals. Some could have even been barefooted. Their feet would have been dusty and dirty. <clears throat> but let me ask you this. If they saw that everybody's feet was dirty, then why didn't somebody else wash the feet? You ever thought about that? Why didn't somebody else do something about it? They have the same trouble that we have. You see, they, they get up every morning and they look in the mirror just like we do. They're more concerned about number one and looking out for number one than, any, uh, than, than we are. You know, they, they're just like us. And so the need was the feet to be washed, but why didn't somebody else wash the feet? Why did Jesus have to wash the feet? Well, they were all looking out for number one. But see, Jesus wasn't looking out for number one. He was looking out for numbers two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and on and on. See, There's, he saw things differently than they saw Things. You see, you look at his power. Jesus says uh, that, that I'm going to leverage my power for your benefit. 
And uh, Jesus was not worried about his feed. He was looking at their feed. I, I love what was said in the prayer just a moment ago. What if we, how much impact could we make on our community if we decided, you know, we're going to try to help alleviate the suffering and the sorrows in people's lives? Just a very simple thing like that. I mean, we don't have to go and move mountains. Just try to ease people's sufferings. Try to help them. Try to wash their feet, in other words. Why don't we do that? See, Jesus said, you don't understand what we're doing right now, but later on you're going to understand this. And the first thing Jesus said, I have been given all authority, but I'm going to lay that authority to the side, and I'm going to wash your feet. You see, to be a foot washer, a follower of Jesus, I cannot feel the power. I've got to give the power away. I've got to lay the power aside. And so the first thing we see is that to serve people or, or to help people, we have got to surrender the power. And then second, we've got to serve other people. Why didn't one of the disciples stand up and say, okay, I'll do it. I'll wash everybody's feet. Why didn't somebody say, well, uh, it's not your place, Jesus. You, you don't need to do that. You're our master. Remember, they called him master. They called him rabbi. Masters and rabbis don't wash feet. Why hadn't somebody else seen that, that uh, need? And why didn't somebody else say, well, we'll, wait, uh, we'll wait on everybody else and, and do uh, what we need to do for others? But, but here's what you don't know. And Luke kind of tells us something about what was going on in John 13. Now, John does not reveal this. But if you go with me to Luke chapter 22 for just a moment, let me show you. Why Jesus made this gesture of washing their feet and he did not lecture them. He did not even point out what was going on. He just says, you don't understand right now, but later on you're going to appreciate this. But in Luke chapter 22, this is a companion verse to what is going on in John 13. Let's read beginning in verse 24. And there arose also... A dispute among them as to which one of them would be regarded the greatest. What were they doing? They weren't interested in washing anybody's feet. Why? They were fussing. They were in a big argument. They were in this big heated discussion with one another who was going to be the greatest. And Jesus now noticed what Luke says. And Jesus said unto them, verse 25, The kings of the Gentiles lorded over them, and those who have authority over them are called benefactors. But it is not this way with you, but the one who is the greatest among you must be like, become like the youngest and the leader like the servants. He says, if you want to be great, what do you do? You learn to serve. And that's what Jesus was saying. You've got to get low enough to become that servant leader that you need to be. And they didn't quite understand that at this point. And so whenever you add that to what Jesus is doing in, in John chapter 13, you get a greater appreciation. You know, we, we spend so much time jockeying position to be the leader. You know, I want to be the leader. Well, that's fine. But guess what? Jesus never wanted to be the leader. He wanted to be the servant. He wanted to be the foot washer. He didn't want to be the one with the say. He wanted to wash feet. He wanted to alleviate problems. He wanted to help people in their suffering and in their needs. And here was the problem. They were not interested in serving. They were interested in ruling. You see, that's what happens. When churches have folks that are more interested in being the chief than being the Indian... Nothing gets done. If you want to be like, if you really want to be a follower of Christ, it's not a leadership role. Now, you may get elevated to be a leader in some way as a, an, an elder or a Sunday school teacher or something like that, but you're elevated to serve to a greater degree. And the problem was they were not interested in serving. 
They were interested in ruling. They were not looking for service. They were looking for servants. Now, let let me just show you why the Bible, although the New Testament was written almost 2,000 years ago, it's just as relevant and just as today as this morning's newspaper. Let me just show you. We we ask, uh, uh, because what happens? Normally, in situations, we ask different questions than Jesus asks. We don't ask the same questions Jesus asked. The disciples were asking, so, uh, well, who's going to wash feet today? <laughs> Jesus was asking, whose feet do I start with? Big, qu- big difference in question, isn't it? We, we sometimes ask, well, well, how much money do you make? Jesus asked, how much money have you given to help others? We ask the question, well, how many employees at the company where you work are under you? (laughs) Jesus asked the question, how many employees do you serve? You see, we ask totally different questions because we focus totally on different things. Not on the things that Jesus focuses upon. We can count all the people that report to us. But Jesus says that uh, uh, I I want to to count all the people that you serve. See, that's the question. It's not who reports to you, but to serve. And uh, uh, here's another really eye-opener. You don't get to pick and choose who you want to serve. (laughs) Because, see, I, I don't mind serving somebody I like. But that's not what Jesus said. You serve everybody. Who who was sitting there that got their feet washed? Judas. What had Judas done? It already was in his heart. You think Jesus didn't know what Judas was going to do? Why did Jesus say after he washed his feet? Now notice this. After washing his feet, he leans over and he says to Judas, whatever you're going to do, go ahead and do it quickly. Now that's after washing his feet he said those things. You know, if, if you look at, at uh, I guess, uh, this, this part of, of following Jesus is, is taking the high road. And a lot of people don't even know what the high road. The high road has been described as this, when you're willing to treat others better than even the way they have treated you. That's the high road. Judas, uh, <laughs> you're about to betray me. But I'm going to wash your feet. feet. And if we're going to be a follower of Christ, there must be a willingness in our heart. If you're going to be a follower of Christ, you've got to have a willingness in your heart to do for others what they may not be willing to do for you. Now, that's, that's what Jesus is talking about here. Be willing to do those things. And then number three, share your passion. Share your passion. You've got to be willing to serve others. You've got to be willing to let go of power, to surrender power. But you've also got to share your passion. And what do you think that it was the most important part of this story? What do you think is the most important? We say, well, it was Jesus washing their feet. Well, you're wrong. <laughs> that, that's not the point. Uh, the most important part of the story is why he did what he did. Why did he do it? Well, that last sentence in verse 1 kind of tells us what's going on. He loved them to the end. That's why he washed their feet. He didn't get angry. He didn't let them have it. He didn't blast them. He loved them to the end. And this is what love is all about. Jesus said, if you're going to to love others the the, uh, way that I love you, then the towel's going to have to come off the rack. And the towel is going to have to get wet. You're going to have to fill the bowl with water. Look in verse 15. Jesus says, for I, for I gave you an example that you also should do as I did to you. Now, some of our religious neighbors have incorporated this into their worship of having foot washings. Is that what Jesus is saying here? Well, if you go to the original Greek, the word there is... As is not just as, but the word should be translated, you do according as I have done to you. According as I have done to you. Jesus is not saying, well, here's another ritual, Hal, to add to your worship. He didn't say that. 
He says, no, you need to do things just like I'm doing. In other words, if you want to be a follower of me, if you want to be a servant like me, you're going to have to think like a foot washer. <laughs> wow. You're going to have to start thinking like a foot washer. And that kind of sheds the light on what uh, is going to happen here in just a moment. You know, you, you got to have a foot washing attitude. You got to be willing whenever you can to serve somebody else. Always see how you can serve others and not worry about how others can serve you. You know, sometimes I'm more interested in how I can be comfortable. Well, he said, don't worry about you. Wor worry about how other people are comfortable. Worry about them. And Peter's response, I want you to notice this. Peter said, look in verse 6. Now, you know, Jesus is going along and he's washing feet. And he gets to Peter. And Peter said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? And Jesus said to him, you do not realize now, but you'll understand later. And Jesus, never shall you wash my feet. Oh, you're not going to wash my feet. And Jesus says, well, if you don't let me wash your feet, what's going to happen? Uh, you'll have no part with me. And Simon Peter then says, well, Lord, then wash not only my feet, but also wash my hands and my head. And Jesus said, no, I'm not giving baths. I'm washing feet. There's a big difference. <laughs> and you see, have you ever heard of acid reflux? Okay, Peter has what I call idiot reflux. <laughs> okay? <laughs> he, he has a way of saying the wrong thing at the wrong time just about every opportunity he got. And Peter's response was not only uh, was he being honest about himself, but let me tell you, I think he's being honest about me as well. You see, he should have said, well... How am I going to help you? What can I do? See, why didn't Peter say, No, Lord, you don't have to wash my feet. I'll take over here and wash everybody else's feet. Why didn't he say that? But they let him wash their feet. You know why? Nobody else would do it. <laughs> what is going on in our community that no, if we don't do it, no one else is going to do it. See, it's important. We notice what Peter did not say. He didn't say, well, Lord, I'll be glad to wash your feet. Why not? Well, the real reason why Peter did not want to wash the feet of Jesus is because it wasn't that he didn't like dirty, uh, dirty feet or didn't think they were dirty feet or didn't think he was too good to wash your feet. But I can tell you why. He didn't love the Lord like he needed to love the Lord. Because in this text, beginning in verse 1, you don't get very far to what? Jesus loved them to the end. He said, I'm going to set an example for you. When we start loving Jesus the way we say we love Jesus, there is going to be a dramatic change in our behavior. We're going to start doing what he loves. You know, if you're, if you're married... And you say to, you know, the wife, sister, or husband, take out the garbage. And he just kind of lays around and doesn't do that. He doesn't pick up after himself. He doesn't help with the meals. He doesn't clean the table. Would you say he really has love or just lip service? Or if the wife says, you know, my husband loves to go to basketball games or football games and I go with him. I don't particularly care about it. Don't know much about it, but I go because he loves it. See, that's loving people. Jesus isn't talking about lip service. He's talking about what love really is and what love is really about. And the real reason why Peter didn't wash feet was because Peter did not love Jesus the way that Jesus says, you're going to have to learn to love me. As a matter of fact, if you go on over to John chapter 21, you're going to find that Jesus did not let this go. It didn't stop right here. You go to the last chapter of John. John is, is going to record a conversation with Peter and Jesus. And what was the question? What is the question in John 21 that Jesus asked Peter? Anybody know? Do you love me? That's right. See, he didn't let this go. He wasn't finished with it. Do you love me? Matter of fact, how many times did he ask the question? Three times. 
He asked three times, if I learn to love Jesus the way that I ought to love Jesus and love people the way that Jesus loved people, I will have that type, that foot washing mentality. I'll be a foot washing servant. And that's what this is all about. The reason that we don't like to, uh, we don't do a lot of things that we know we ought to be doing is because why? We, We really don't love Jesus as we should. Uh, now we could say, well, you know, <laughs> uh, I hadn't been trained to do this and I'm a shy person and I don't know the Bible well enough and I don't know this and I can't do that. But the thing is, is real, do I really love Jesus as much as I say I love Jesus? You know, this morning, the themes that, that Hal led us in, in uh, our song service basically was about the love of Jesus. And our response to him is to love him back, but not with lip service. Not just with a song that says, Jesus, I love you, or a prayer that says, God, I love you, but by doing the things that he values and doing the things that he loves and loving the things that he loved. Now, as we close out this morning, John chapter 13, a story about a man, the greatest man that ever lived, that showed us how to be great. And he just didn't take up a towel. Well, let me tell you something, folks. <laughs> he took up the cross. He didn't just wash those disciples' feet with water, but he washed their sins away with his blood. See, that's real love. The other day I saw a sign, neat sign. I wish we had the room on our marquee to put it. You know, there's a, uh, an ad- advertisement that says, friends don't let friends drive drunk. I think it's maybe mad, mad uh, you know, mothers against dr- dr- drunk driving. But this sign said, friends don't let friends die lost. That's pretty catchy, isn't it? Friends don't let friends die lost. But you know what the problem with that sign is? That's all it is. It's just a sign. Only whenever I get Jesus' love in my heart will I then say, you know, I've got a friend, and I love that friend, and I'm not going to let him die lost. You see, that makes a difference. Catchy signs, great sayings. Quick quotes. That's not the answer. The answer is loving Jesus. That's the true answer. Love what he loved. Value what he values. Be what he was. This morning, if you're not a child of God, let me encourage you to become one. This morning, you may not need your feet washed. (laughs) But I can tell you, you need your soul cleansed. And Jesus is the one who can do that. This morning, because of your faith in God, faith that Jesus came and died on the cross for your sins, are you willing to repent of your sins, to confess him? Confess that faith that Jesus died for your sins and be buried with him in baptism for the remission of your sins. And again, the journey with him, following him. If you're subject to your invitation, won't you come as we stand and sing?